and what these haters talking about. And what these suckers talking about. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessed, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, man, I was going to drop a video this morning, but uh, my company made me go get drug tested. Accident happened at work. I passed with flying colors, but they kept me up from 7 in the morning after my shift was done all the way to 1030 investigating. And uh, after the paperwork was done and everybody got their stories, I came out clean. I almost got wild, man. It was it was a crazy it was a crazy experience, man. But it was an accidental damage that happened at work. So let's get into the video. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description with my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up, and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now, the video I want to talk about is this. I had did a video a while back. And um, this was before a lot of controversy on YouTube where I was getting accused and others were getting accused about the videos that we're putting out. It's putting people in harm's way. And uh, when I talked about the Mexican Mafia member Cantana from Salinas, obviously this individual in the picture, you know, he's out there doing big things. He's doing what he got to do according to his obligations to the prison organizations. That's his prerogative. That man made his decision. That man made his lifetime commitment. And so he's going to honor that. And hey, he's part of the lifestyle. So me talking about him, regardless whether I'm putting his business out, whether he wanted to be put out there. Obviously, you can see in the picture, he's smiling. So I'm pretty sure he's comfortable with his stature, with his status in the prison organization. So in doing so, I get a call and I get some information. And pretty much there's an individual in Salinas, California, responsible, who's an NF member, who's responsible for a lot of the regimens in Salinas, whatever they have control over. So they threw a meeting and I asked them, I go, what's the meeting about? I guess the meeting is to talk about this individual Cantana. Also, like I said, they were trying to figure out who the other individual was, which is a Mexican mafia member that was made from Boggles. So now you got two Mexican mafia members in Salinas, California, out and about in control of their neighborhoods, conducting you know illegal activities and illegal businesses. And these individuals, and the NF member named Diablo from Salinas decided to throw a junta and talk about it with the street regiment as to what they wanted to do with Cantana. Now, remember, I did this video in 2023. Cantana was made as a Mexican mafia member in 2018 in the penal system. So this is not new information. It just came to light when I spoke about it. This, this individual has been a Mexican mafia member for quite some time and he's been out. And there's been a, quite some subscribers that shot me like little stuff here and there that look for this is him right here. You know, I was with him right here. You know, I just seen him right here. So that tells me, and not to put none of those pictures out there, the people that showed me those pictures and those video footages, that this individual's out and about and he's making big moves because where he was located at and where he was spotted is a lot of different areas, including across the border. So I'm pretty sure he's moving around, you know, with security. Or he's being, you know, means incognito, but he's still doing his thing and he's letting it be known because obviously these individuals in Salinas, California decided to say, you know what, we're going to throw a junta and we're going to talk about what we're going to do with this individual. So as they're telling me this, I'm like, what do you mean what they're going to do with the individual? The premise of the meeting was whether they were going to knock him down since he's a Mexican mafia member in Salinas, out on the streets, running the mud, in control of the Sureños. Pro they're thinking about the possibilities of what damage he can do. He can probably have all these Sureño neighborhoods invading Norteño territories that they think belongs to them. How much of a threat does this individual pose to the Norteño regimens, the street regimens, and so on and so forth, that they, may, they might feel that they have to take the initiative to say, you know what, let's get rid of them. So, like I said, my video technically only identified what this individual was, what he's doing, what the agenda of the Mexican Mafia was, plain and simple. You know, none of my, none of my videos, and, and it's not my statements and not my encouragement to have a prison gang faction, a prison organization to say, you know what, we're going to take this video and we're going to go utilize this video to justify our actions and create an argument and, or debate or a debacle and talk about what we're going to do with this individual just because this individual's name has been put out there. No, these individuals are going to target one another because of a long-lasting history of bloodshed and resentment, hate towards one another. 
And this whole political game of, you know, who's bigger and who's better, who has more power, who has more structure, because in reality, I do talk a lot about the Mexican mafia because a lot of people come forward with it. Very few people come about NF information, but when they do, you know, I relinquish it to the public because at the end of the day, they're going to do what they want to do and they're going to do what they continuously want to do, whether I put it out there or not. So to me, it doesn't really bother me because they're going to conduct their illegal activities and flood the streets with illegal drugs. They're going to encourage a lot of the gang violence. And those are the aspects that I'm trying to point out when it comes to these prison organizations. That's all they care about. All they care about is making members, having leadership on the streets to overlook the streets so that way they can get connects, flood the drugs, flood the streets with violence, make all these little young kids follow their rules, follow their regulations, follow their leadership. They're probably doing a lot more on the basis and the premises of using YouTube videos and our YouTube information to continuously brainwash these kids. Hey, don't pay attention to that. Don't pay attention to that. So now we're going to get more strict. Now we're going to implement more policies. Now we're going to make them do this and do this and do this and that. So that way we can distract them from saying, sitting down and having a free time to say, you know what? I'm going to read this video. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to read the comments. Okay, bro. He's speaking the truth, man. He's speaking facts, bro. You know, they don't want that instilled in these young kids' minds. So they're going to cause these meetings and they're going to cause all these new regulations. and They're going to cause all these problems and distractions for these kids. By saying, you know what, you want to be part of the regiment? Here, we're going to get you involved. We're going to have you involved a little more. Matter of fact, hey, hey, little homie, you want to take this sack, go sell it, man. I'll give you like 50 bucks. You bring me back the rest. I'll put money in your pocket. That YouTuber ain't putting money in your pocket. I'm putting money in your pocket. Hey, bro, here's a gun, bro. Here, you know, that's you. That's that's free, man. That's from the regiment, bro. The regiment's looking out for you, man. We're trying to keep the neighborhood strapped and protect the people. They're going to brainwash it in a lot of ways and in a lot of senses and a lot of fashion to keep these kids distracted. But to use one of my videos and say, you know what, we're going to utilize what this man put out about this individual. And now we want to deal with it in our own way. Now, the individual obviously is becoming a, a man of importance. He's an individual who represents an organization who they don't want to see in their territory, which already has happened. It's already took place. But then again, like I said, they've, the Mexican mafia has been in Northern California for so long has had members from Northern California for so long, Sureño neighborhoods working for Mexican Mafia members for so long, the damage was done a long time ago. There's no reason to try to clean it up now, especially with the end of hostilities. It's not going to make a difference because if these, well, the end the result of the meeting was they're going to let the individual do his thing. But if he starts infringing on Norteño territory, on street regiment territory, he starts taking their business away or these Sureños start targeting Norteños, which... It's still happening in Salinas, California, as we speak. Northern and the Southerners are still beefing that peace treaty and up north on the streets ain't really effective. It ain't making a difference. These dudes in prison thought it made a difference, but it only made a difference so that way they could be out there on the yards in control of everything, gaining everything, just to make the organizations prosper in their endeavors when it comes to organized crime. On the streets, nobody really cares. From the perspective that I'm getting from a lot of people, they, un they understand what's going on in the penal system, but on the streets, they're like, bro, we're not, not going to apply that concept until we go to jail. Out here, it's funk season. It's gang-related season. It's gang violence. It's not going to stop. But pretty much the meeting was, if this individual is causing a lot of problems for these NF, interrupting their business, interrupting their money, and their people are getting hurt, and these there is a big uprise and resistance, and the Sureños and the Mexican Mafia are taking over Salinas, then obviously they're going to do what they got to do and target this particular individual. But for now, he's being left alone. So I'm listening to this conversation. And like I said, the controversy all over YouTube, which is very unfortunate for a lot of us that talk about these members, for a lot of us that have been targeted. I, as well as other people, have been targeted about like, oh, your videos have gotten people hurt. Yeah, I do understand that. But at the end of the day, I highly doubt these individuals are making decisions based on our information. They probably just look at it and are entertained like everybody else. They're going to continuously target each other. And play this little political game of, man, you can't gain my streets. These are my streets. No, these are my streets. I'm taking them over. You know, I work for these big homies. I work for this organization. All that is, is just men's egos. That's all it is. It's an ego trip of two different organizations that are trying to make power play moves during a time where everything is supposed to be peaceful. You know, there's a big curtain in front of everybody. Yeah, no, we're at peaceful. I'm cool with you. You're cool with me. You're my carnal. I'm your carnal. You go do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. You control your people. I control my people. But behind closed doors, they're politicking on each other. They're trying to backbite each other, undercut each other when it comes to prices. All in a fight for streets that really they don't understand. While they're sitting here fighting for these streets, 
nobody realizes that these streets also have regular civilians, civilians like myself, civilians like you guys that are not part of this. Yeah, you may watch it, you may like it, you may be fascinated and intrigued that it's crazy how other people live. But at the end of the day, a lot more people are gonna get hurt as collateral damage or get caught up in this drama of two prison organizations wanting to take over everything for political gain, for economic gain, for social presence of, you know, of territorial warfare. But yeah, they don't, they, they forget to realize like, bro, there's a lot more people that live in these streets that want to be safe, that don't want to see them drugs on them streets, that don't want to go outside or wake up in the middle of the night to gunshots of two dudes shooting at each other because one wears blue and one wears red, one claims a neighborhood, really just made up neighborhoods if you really think about it. Yeah, we created, we grew up in these little environments, we grew up in these little neighborhoods, this little section of a city, and we gave it a name, East Side Tulare, West Side Tulare. South side this, north side that. Do we recreate those names? Put political symbols on it like the 14 and the 13. Bro, it doesn't mean nothing to regular society. So all they, all society sees is a bunch of people that haven't grown up, that haven't matured, that are still stuck in their prison ways, going at it with one another. And they have to make sure to protect their family. They have to make sure to protect that their kids are not going to school, finding access to these drugs that these Prison gang leaders are telling these drug dealers from these neighborhoods to sell at corners and sell, and give to their nie nieces and nephews to go sell in school just to make money for them so they can send it back to the penal system. So you don't get to see the bigger picture like I get to. Trust me, I used to share the perspective. I didn't care about regular society. See, I have a son now and I have kids. I've changed the way I think. I've changed the way I lived. So I don't want to raise my kids in a neighborhood where they have access to that or where some grown man who doesn't know the difference between a kid and an adult is gonna walk up to my kids or my friend's kids and say, you know what, man, this, this, it looks like cotton candy right here, but it's cut with fentanyl and sell it to some kids because they just wanna get a couple hundred dollars and risk 25 to life for a couple hundred dollars just to give a couple hundred dollars to an individual in the penal system who's gonna spend it on a drug habit and feed his veins or he's gonna spend it on, a, on some soups. So we're killing all these kids' lives so individuals in the penal system can have commissary, some soups, some pork grinds. They want to live luxury and put squeeze cheese and beans in their noodles. Both organizations have political ties and, and cartel connects. Now, like I said, it's just one big pissing contest and it's just men's egos colliding with one another and causing more damage than they can possibly think to the rest of the world, the rest of the streets, the streets where people decided to just relocate or grew up in all their lives and just love that city and want to make a living there, want to enjoy a luxury life there, want to prosper in life there. But they have to worry and constantly be concerned about their kids getting access to drugs, guns, or getting caught up in the crossfire of stray bullets because these individuals just want to bump egos. But at the end of the day, you know, I did go to bed without no guilty conscience because like I said, I do put these individuals' businesses out there because I want these kids to understand, you know, who they're following, who they're looking up to what their true colors really are, what their faces really look like since they wanna be out there so much to the public now. I hold no responsibility for what they do to one another because at the end of the day, I was grown enough and responsible enough finally for once in my life to make a change, to make a difference, to change my mentality, to change my criminal life and be a regular civilian, a regular individual who loves to go to work, who loves to come home and look at his family, who loves to lay in bed with his girl. I'd rather do that than to be on the streets talking politics with other men. I'd rather be at my job site, busting my butt for 12 hours than to be than to spend 12 hours in the streets, strung out on drugs, smoking dope, looking for individuals who wear certain colors, looking for individuals with certain neighborhoods like I used to when I was a kid. I guess you could say, man, I finally matured and realized, bro, like everything that they're fighting for, this ideology, this prison status, this prison stature, this glorification of being a gang leader and a boss, on these organized crimes, you know, to me, it just got played out. You know, I got tired of it. And I understand not everybody's gonna grow to that mentality, but as long as I have, you know, I can't blame anybody else and I can't blame them for what they do and how they perceive things and who they continuously still wanna be. You know, I got, I finally going out of it, man. And I actually, I'm actually proud of myself for once. I can actually say I'm proud of myself that, you know, I let it go. I can't say these individuals are gonna let it go. They're just gonna end up in the state prison system or the federal prison system undergoing a lot of internal conflict with one another, killing each other off, at the same time starting a political war amongst 
different organizations offer what? To take control of a prison yard. A prison yard ain't nothing but five pull-up bars, three tables, and some dirt and some grass, some basketball. Bro, that is nothing to lose your life for. That is nothing to fight over for now that you think about it. Then they want to fight for the streets. At the end of the day, you guys can sit here and fight for the streets all you want and commit all these illegal activities, all this crime. But when it's all said and done, who do you think is going to show up? The FBI, ATF, DEA, law enforcement, and you guys are going to lose all that. They have the power to really take it away. That's the true sense of power when these individuals feel like really cracking down and taking it all away from everybody. Yeah, you guys all lose and there's going to be a group of individuals that's going to come and do it again. But law enforcement is going to be right there like, all right, we're going to take that away from you too. You're never going to win in that lifestyle. But if you lived an average life, a normal life like everybody else, you'd be winning like everybody else. But nobody wants to win in that nature. They want to win in the political sense and the prison's nonsense with prison activities and prison gangs. So I just wanted to share that video with you guys, man. It was an interesting phone call that I got back a couple of weeks back or I think like a month back. I just haven't had the time to do the video for you guys. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section, man. I would really appreciate it. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.